ಕೋಣೆ ಅಲ್ಲ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಕಮ್ My name is Lameja. Um, recently I've like, um, discovered the fullness of life and really wanted to live life to the fullest and like, really you know, be grateful for it and do everything that I can. And since there are so many options because I can do anything, I've become very indecisive. Um, and um, I know the cliche, like, follow your heart and things like that, but it's really hard to do when there are so many options and hard to choose. So I feel like I'm very, like, stagnant and just, like, traveling and going to different places to, like, find the answer. And I feel like, you know, the answer might be to surrender or to my heart, to my soul. but that isn't like a clear answer for a logical person, like rational person like myself. So I was wondering what you would suggest in that type of situation. So the, the problem with being rational only means that you're limited actually to assessing the world around you with your conceptual abilities. There's nothing else that comes into play so easily. You have that feeling that, yeah, it could be surrender, but the conceptual is not able to conceptualize what surrender is. Because you're operating only from the conceptual and the emotional, when you get a bit emotional about things. So, it would be interesting to to know about life and about your life and about the world around you and about what you're meant to do, what is your purpose and so on by handing over the, the power center to the soul, to your soul. So instead of assuming that I, Alisha is your name, you said? Lavesha. Lavesha? That I, Lavesha, I'm able to actually figure out what I want to do, but I'm not able to. So you're able to, but you're not able to. So, bottom line, you're not able to. So the powers you think you have actually don't serve you, which is the conceptual. Your rational thinking mind is not able to serve you for this, right? So that means it would be time to think, hmm, maybe there's some other part of this being which may have the answer. And there is. And that's the good news. There is. And that part of the being that knows what this thing here, this love Isha has to hand over the scepter to the master of her being, the soul. But how does she do that? I mean, how to trust? By practicing, trying, looking, searching. What is the thing you actually do? You try to discern in, in every moment, whenever you have time, it doesn't have to be all the time to start with, whenever you you have a doubt about something, you quiet yourself down and ask, is this intention of mine, or is this thing I want to do, is it arising from my ego, from the ego, or is it arising from my soul, from the master of my being, from the guru within, the teacher within, the master, the source of truth and love, is that entity impulsing this will to action, or is it coming from the ego? As you do that, as you move into greater and greater states of surrender, Vishman Bhagavata. At one point, what happens is, is that you get an answer. You say, should I be a dancer? And you get, yes. Then you go with it. But the question is, are you ready to expand your consciousness in that way? by starting out in a small way. Just when you leave the satsang hall and you go out, if you want to buy a banana, you can ask yourself, is this the thing for me to do, to buy this banana? You might get a yes, you might get a no. 
see is that yes coming from the ego or is it coming from the soul this is the practice so all your decisions that you can't make who's going to make them for you then you have to institute a change somewhere in order for that ability to reveal itself you see that right yes um interestingly for this year i decided like i'm not going to make any plans instead of taking the challenge i feel like i've been allowing other people to make the decisions yeah. i'll like meet someone and they'll say like oh pushkar is nice for holly or holy i was like okay i'll go and i didn't really make the decision but i just like made the decision based off of someone else's and which is actually handing over power to another right so i'm not really I'm trying not to make decisions. And when you said like leave the place and see if I wanted to get a banana. If I was to ask myself that question, I would say, "Okay, well, you know, banana is good for you." And then I'll start thinking about these different things. There won't be like a yes or no. It'll be like a That's the ego. Okay. So the answer will be no then. You don't know if it'll be no or yes because okay. the soul's impulse is very subtle. and the ego's voice is very loud and demanding and insisting and pushing and yearning and wanting and hoping and you know sort of opinionating that impulse of the soul is independent of all those ideas about food and environment and good and bad and humanism so it's a gradual process of training yourself to to discipline yourself to actually see that the actions you are doing are resulting in something for this it's either resulting in suffering or it's resulting in joy and to start taking real responsibility for the actions and start to ask to start to actually tune in and say hey is this action coming from the truth and even if you don't get an answer it's still better to ask than not to ask because you're anyway not functioning with answers so try to do that take it up at least once see what happens experiment and i just wanted to ask if you have like any books or literature that you would recommend reading to understand this concept a little further if you would do me the great favor of praying every day for me that i can get down to writing the book <laughs> and sit my lips for at least a year and not do a single satsang that book will be ready very soon and you will be informed <laughs> when the book is done or Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Charyam. We won't forget you. <laughs> <laughs>